You can take an entire course including topics in this video through our website and get a certificate of completion from RASAF, the online educational radio frequency institute located in Irvine, California. Instructions and coupon for taking this course is provided at the end of this video. This picture shows the different applications of radio frequency. So as you see here, we are starting with the intermediate or low frequency here. So we say this is very low frequency, low frequency and this is used for maritime radio and when we increase the frequency we reach middle uh, frequency here as you see so this is used for radio and then we're increasing we are going to tv range and here we have the mobile application range so this is used uh, for mobile it's starting from 300 megahertz up to 3 gigahertz and the wavelength is uh, one meter and it's decreasing to 10 centimeter as we increase the frequency and it's called ultra high frequency so we have all of these applications like gps wi-fi 4g they're all here and after that we are even going to higher frequencies and we have more advanced uh, technologies and applications like satellite communication and radio astronomy which are challenging because we are operating in really high frequency and as you see the wavelengths is really low for this kind of application so there's a question here we say why we should operate at higher frequencies why do we bother with that so the first reason we say the frequency spectrum is fragmented and dense so as you see here in the past we had only few applications like maritime radio we didn't have tv we didn't have mobile technology so we were uh, operating in the frequency up to 3 megahertz but now we are increasing applications we are adding more applications so we have to open up a space here it means that we have to increase our frequency and go to higher frequencies so imagine that we have a corridor and people there are few people are walking inside this corridor but uh, what if the number of people increase then what should we do in order to make the transportation easier we have to increase the width of this corridor so here is the same idea we have to increase the spectrum widths we have to add more frequency range in order to add more applications another reasons it can be in high frequencies efficiency is um, is better so we say efficiency is propagation and also immunity to some forms of noise and uh, impairments as well as the size of antenna requires so the size of antenna is one of the most important things that we pay attention in uh, radio frequency design. We say the antenna size is typically related to wavelengths of the signal and in practice is it's usually equal to quarter of the wavelengths. We are going to explain it here. So let's go to this picture again. Let's say we are, we are not trying to bother ourselves to uh, have high frequency communication so let's say we have a data for example 20 kilohertz uh, frequency and we are going to send this data from system 1 to system 2 and it can be a mobile for example so let's see what is the wavelength for 20 kilohertz as you see in this table uh, it should be in this range so it's a very low frequency here as you see so it's around 20 kilometers and we said that the length of antenna the length of antenna is proportional to our wavelengths actually we are going to talk about this it makes sense uh, for example let's imagine that we have a wave like this and in order to capture all of this we should have a antenna for example let's imagine that it's an antenna like this for example but if we increase the wavelengths of this wave here for example so these two peaks here is wavelengths now imagine that we have a high wavelengths and it's, uh, we have low frequency and the wavelengths is increasing so we have this one here now if we have the same antenna because we're just getting a very small portion of our wave we won't be able to capture this so we have to increase the size of our antenna so uh, we are not going to study in this in detail but you have to know the length of antennas proportional to lambda and generally we say it's uh, proportional to actually quarter of lambda so here 
we said for 20 kilohertz we have 20 kilometers and let's say it's a quarter of that so we need an antenna here we need antenna size of uh, five kilometers for this mobile and this is really impossible so what should we do we have to send this data inside our we have to process this data inside our for example transmitter and imagine this is the uh, data processing center and after that we have to do frequency shift it means that we have to increase the frequency from 20 kilohertz to a RF frequency for example let's say 1 gigahertz in order to have high frequency and lower lambda so here we are incre decreasing our lambda and now we can send the high frequency here and we don't need a long antenna here so this process is called frequency shift we can also explain here we say the data is structured and easily represented at low frequencies how can we represent it or physically translate it to these higher frequencies we are going to explain this actually so we we just now learned that with using a transmitter we can translate the low frequency to high frequency without losing our data so we basically translate we increase the frequency in order to avoid the problems we mentioned so imagine that we have the human audible range is starting from 20 hertz going to 20 kilohertz for example cell phone we don't have a data which has a frequency of one gigahertz so first as we explained here we have to increase the frequency of this data and make it RF frequency then after that we have we should uh, send this thing so we said uh, in order to have a, a small size for antenna we need a small lambda and so we will need high frequency that's the reason we increase the frequency of our data so as you see in this picture we are explaining the frequency translation imagine that our data band is here and this is this has a very low frequency because it's close to zero here is a zero frequency imagine and we are going to higher frequencies so basically this is our data spectrum so this is our data and now we are using the frequency shift here inside our transmitter and we shift we translate our channel translate our data to higher frequencies and as you see now we have the channel here we have the data here but it's around high frequency then when we once we did this we are able to send our signal to environment to space without being worried about the upcoming problems hey guys thank you for watching the entire video i'm going to provide you with a coupon for taking our fundamental basic concepts and components ra rf 101 so you can uh, get this course from our website if you go to the page you just have to select the buy this course and register here as you see if you're not registered up to now so you need your username email password and also you have to answer a security question and then you can uh, press the uh, register button uh, press the sign up button and uh, you will be able to uh, register in our website and after that all you need to uh, do is going to the course landing page and uh, go to check out and as you see click to enter your code you can put the the coupon code here and then apply the coupon so then you will have this course for free and you can uh, take this course as you see you won't pay anything for this course Rasoft has one of the most complete online certificate in radio frequency available which covers practical topics needed to be a knowledgeable RF engineer. Since all courses are consulted closely by design engineers and pioneers whom have worked as RF engineers in top RF companies such as Qualcomm, Broadcom, Skyworks, Intel and Apple as well as avionic companies. It covers the necessary information to land a job or successful in your career. Your first step to take the prerequisite course, RAH RF101, which we have provided the free coupon for it, RFPREREQ101. See you there shortly.